yo, 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 yo. from the Old Testament. God gave his prophets a special ability. Who remembers what those abilities were? What was that? Um, God gave them the ability to see in the future. Yep. What was that, Kira? And they told everyone about it. That's right. God gave the prophets the ability to see things in the future. And he would show the prophets what was going to happen and they will go and tell everybody about the bad things that was going to happen if they didn't follow God. But they will also tell people about the Savior who was coming to take away their sins. So far, we look at the first two of the Fab Five prophets, Elijah and Elijah. But today, we're going to hear a whale of a tale about a prophet who became fish food. Who do you think I'm talking about? Jonah! That's right. We're talking about Jonah. hear the true story about Jonah, I want to give one of you a chance to win your own fish food by playing a game called Fishy Free Throw. Okay, so the rules to this game are simple. You get one chance to throw this ball and hit that target, the bucket that's behind you. And if you get the ball inside the bucket with just one throw, you get to win your own yummy fish food. But if you miss, you must suffer the consequence. But don't worry about the consequence though. I'm sure you get on your first try. Ready, set, go. Oh no. You missed the target. Oh, well, now you must suffer the consequences. So let's see what that is. You know what, wait. Maybe we should wait after the story. Many miles from Israel was a giant city called Nineveh, filled with people who did not know God. Nineveh was a filthy and despicable town doing filthy and despicable things. But God, he wanted to give them a second chance. So he told a prophet named Jonah, 
go to Nineveh and tell the people to turn away from their sins or be destroyed. Jonah knew all about the people of Nineveh. They were the worst. He was afraid to go there and he had no desire to help them. So he ran away from God to the sea town of Joppa. And when he found the ship's captain there, he said, I'll take a one-way ticket to not Nineveh. <laughs> but God wasn't going to give up on Jonah so quickly. And as the ship sailed away with Jonah in the opposite direction of Nineveh, God sent a huge storm to batter the ship. The sailors, they were completely freaked out. And they started throwing things overboard to make the ship lighter so it wouldn't sink. But when they saw Jonah, they asked him, are you the cause of this trouble? Who are you and where are you from? Jonah told them that he was from Israel and that he worshiped the one true God. He told them that he was running away from God and that he was the cause of this terrible storm. And the only way to stop it was to throw him into the sea. So guess what? <laughs> That's exactly what they did. And as soon as Jonah splashed into those raging waters, the storm it came to a sudden halt. Everything stopped. Jonah was cowardly and faithless in that moment. He was doing some cowardly and faithless things, but God wanted to give him a second chance. So he sent a giant fish to swallow Jonah whole. Jonah's one-way ticket to not Nineveh had turned into three free nights in the Fish Guts Hotel. For three days and three nights, God kept Jonah alive in the dark, in that stinky belly of that giant fish. It's not what Jonah wanted, I'm very sure, but it was exactly what he needed. Time to quietly think and pray to God. As Jonah began to realize his mistake, he called out to God and he prayed. From deep in the sea, I call out to you, God, and you hear me. I will do what you say and tell the people that you are the God who saves. As soon as Jonah said, amen, <laughs> he heard the fish's belly start gurgling and rumbling all around him. And now that Jonah had turned back to God, it was checkout time. And at the Lord's command, the giant fish spit Jonah onto dry land. Once again, God told Jonah, go to Nineveh. Jonah still smelling like fish breath he wasn't about to make those same mistakes again. So this time Jonah obeyed God and he did what he was told. He went to Nineveh and told the people, in 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed if you don't turn your hearts to God. When he said the words, Jonah braced himself waiting for someone to get mad and give him a good beating. But he was sure the people would not believe him. To his surprise, they did. Even the king of Nineveh listened, and he believed. After hearing the warning, the king gave an order. All of you must call out to God with all of your hearts. Stop doing what is evil, and maybe God will have mercy on us. So that's exactly what they did. All 120,000 of the people, from the lowest servants to the highest of royalty, they cried out to God. And when God saw that they had stopped doing what was evil, he took pity and he didn't destroy them. Because of God's great patience, both Jonah and Nineveh had a second chance to follow God and to do what was right. him to do something and he did the exact opposite yeah but he's not the only one who messed up that's true the entire city of Nineveh was missing the target too it was a city filled with filthy and despicable people who were doing filthy and despicable things they both missed the target so badly that God could have given them both terrible consequences hey speaking of consequences we still need to figure out what's your consequence for missing the fishy free throw. Yeah, let's see what your consequence is. Hmm. Hmm. 
to see. You are thrown out of the house forever? Whoa, that's... That's pretty bad. <laughs> was awesome. My friend here, he could have suffered the consequence and could have been kicked out of the house forever. But he got another chance to hit the target. Do you know what that reminds me of? Our, our story, story for, for today. today. It reminds me of our story today. Uh, in the story, both Jonah and the people of Nineveh were missing God's target of perfection. Do you know another word for that? Sin. sin. Yep, sin. When we miss God's target of perfection, it's called sin. Even though God could have destroyed them for sinning and kicked them out of heaven forever, he gave them another chance. God was patient with both Jonah and the people of Nineveh because he wanted them to turn away from their sins. And guess what? He wants the same thing for us. That's what our Bible verse for today tells us. Let's take a look. 2 Peter 3 and 9b says, God is patient with you. He doesn't want anyone to be destroyed. Instead, he wants all people to turn away from their sin. Sometimes it's easy to think that you've missed God's target and messed up so bad that God couldn't possibly use you to do big things. But that's not true. Jonah sinned against God big time, but God was patient with Jonah and gave him another chance. Just remember, your sins are, t are never too big to be forgiven by God. And it's never too late to ask for forgiveness. That's right. God is patient, so we can go to him for a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, a one millionth chance. But does that mean that you should keep on sinning? No way. No way. Not at all. God doesn't want you to sin, but when you do, he's ready to forgive you. He can still use you in big ways, no matter how many times you messed up. That's why he gave us his son, Jesus. In fact, the son of Jonah actually reminds us of Jesus. In the same way that Jonah spent three days in the belly of that big fish, Jesus spent three days in the belly of the earth. He was dead and buried in a tomb. But did Jesus stay there? No, no way. way. No way. Just like Jonah was spit from the giant fish, Jesus was raised from the dead and came out of the tomb. The story of Jonah is a reminder that Jesus has paid the price for our sins and that God, with, with his enormous patience, is ready to give us another chance. 